I'll give you both views. Uh, my wife, my uh, two young kids, we eat all kinds of products that were grown using GMO inputs. Okay. And, and I'm completely convinced that they're safe. Um, and I think that from a scientific or a technical standpoint that, you know, there's no really rational scientific argument that's ever been made that they're unsafe. Okay. The, the, the debate about, you know, a farming practice, so to speak, to me is, is independent from the making the farm more efficient. When you take some of these very large broad acre farms that form the basis for food ingredients that really feed the world, forget San Francisco, uh, San Francisco or New York City or Los Angeles for a minute. Think about, you know, the other 300 million people. Yeah, or Paris, London, yeah. and, you know, Barcelona, sophisticated cities yeah. where people buy into organic over GMO. Yeah, but, but might these people be wrong? Like, it, we had a huge anti-nuclear movement in the 70s. Yeah which net-net resulted in the burning of more oil and causing massive carbon to be put into the atmosphere and cause global warming. Yeah. And all these hippy-dippy people and Bob Dylan and Jackson Brown all did the No Nukes concert, and I had a No Nukes t-shirt when I was eight years old, and I believed <laughs> from the rhetoric, nuclear's not bad. Now I'm a, I'm a 45-year-old guy. I do the research. If I'm in charge of the world, or when I'm in charge of the world, I'm you know, president <laughs> of the planet Earth, I'm going to launch 300 nuclear reactors because this is the safest and most efficient way to stop global warming. Yep. We should be doing, ma it's a it was a huge error. Yeah. And it was based on some bad emotional moments like Three Mile Island or Chernobyl. And now, tragically, Fukushima. These three things have scared the hell out of people for nuclear. Those were isolated instances with very old technology. This new technology is completely safe. Is that the same thing happening with GMOs where this stuff is actually safe and good for us and is gonna be great for the world, but we got a bunch of hippy dippies who are going, oh, we, we have to get off GMO. We have to eat organic. Because my understanding of organic is you have to put tons of pesticide on it because well, well, it's not resistant to bugs. Well, it, it, so th there's, a, there's a whole world of sort of organic farming practice. and everything Yeah, let's get into it. Geared towards a specific kind of consumer. But, right. But when you, when you talk about humanity, okay, feeding humanity. Yeah. Like for me, if, if I was starting an enterprise that was just feeding rich people, I, I just wouldn't be that into it. Yeah. I mean, what, what, I'm, what we're trying to do, the farmers that we work with, what they're trying to do is uh, feed humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, and humanity includes wealthy people in San Francisco and New York City, and they'll make their own decisions about their preferences and other things. But I, I feel like uh, when, you, when you talk about things like uh, global hunger, yeah. or, or even hunger in the United States where people can't afford, I mean, you know what's going on in Silicon Valley where it's sure. impossible to find a, a decently priced one bedroom apartment. Yeah. You know, having available low cost sources of, of uh, cal nutrition, calorific value is, is so essentially important for the population that I think it's really important not to be judgmental. So if you're asking me, is it misguided? I think the attacks on, on various farming practices and other things are misguided. Um, Consumers have options, and especially wealthy or yeah. upper middle class consumers, and they can exercise those. Yeah. But I, I don't think it's a fair criticism um, of people who are, who are growing the world's food and all the rest of the people in the world who need, need, to, need that nutrition. Um, uh, the, the attacks are somewhat, um, I think, uh, over the top and, and a little bit misguided. I, it feels so misguided to me because when I did my own research, I started reading about this. A lot of what these GMO things are doing is they're saying, hey, let's make the husks a little more resistant to the bugs. Yeah. We make the husk a little more resistant. Yeah, sure, we might evolutionarily make the bugs a little more powerful. Okay, we get it. Um, but that might having these husks that are a little more resistant to bugs means you don't have to spray this massive pesticide on it. So you, you got to pick your poison here, literally. Do you want poison or do you want a GMO? And if there was a GMO that made things three times more fibrous and it wound up you know, correcting for obesity or half of obesity or 20% obesity, that might actually, it turns out obesity is the big killer anyway. Yeah, and, and the other piece of it is if you just sometime go do the exercise of go look at a field that's, that's untreated, mm -hmm. that's un that hasn't had an application or that's being grown under a, a very strict organic practice and then compare that to a, a production ready um, agricultural field with with um, yeah. What's uh, the difference? It's huge. I don't. I, I, we've quantified before uh, um, the the actual difference in yield, but it, it's massive, and and you can see it visually. Double digit percentage. Yeah, oh yeah. You can sure. see it visually, and again, I'm I want to be you know clear about it. I'm not suggesting eating organic food is wrong. I, what I'm suggesting is that the 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 kind of the attacks against the the conventional food system I, I don't think are fair 
Hey, everybody, I want to take a moment to tell you about retargeting. This is a very, very important thing for startups to understand because customer acquisition is what it's all about, and AdRoll is the best retargeting platform on the planet. Over 25,000 advertisers use it. And I want to tell you today about a new product they have. It's called Send Roll. No, it's not sending to get your rolls and buttered rolls. No. This is about email, and SendRoll uh, lets you get all those people who are window shoppers, people who are checking out your website, and then you can convert them into buyers, which is what you want, getting them to sign up for your product or service by email. So imagine they visit your site, but then they get an email follow-up. SendRoll is powerful retargeting tech plus effective emails, and the results have been spectacular. The average SendRoll gets a 45 to 60% open rate and a 10 to 20% click-through and I can tell you, running inside.com, that that is probably three times, four times the industry average. And it's so easy to set up a send roll campaign. It just takes minutes. They give you all the templates, and they have a 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week customer service line if you need help. And what I always like to do when we have somebody who has a product uh, that's loved on our program, we don't want to read any sponsor messages, any partner messages for things that are not loved the great part is a lot of my founders from my portfolio use AdRoll, so it's very easy for me to talk about their new product, SendRoll. James Heller, the founder of Rapify, which went through my incubator, says AdRoll is an integral part of our customer acquisition strategy. It allows us to continue to garner impressions long after the initial customer interaction. It's also one of the most cost-effective tools to bolster any integrated marketing strategy. AdRoll is the best retargeting platform, period. That's according to James Heller, good friend of mine, and one of my investments at Rapify. So here's your call to action, everybody. Try SendRoll and get a $100 credit. Just go to adroll.com slash twist, adroll.com slash twist, adroll.com slash twist, and get that $100 credit. And please try that SendRoll and give them some feedback uh, and let them know that Ad Jason sent you. Okay, let's get back to this amazing program. Mm -hmm.